There's some new evidence on seed oils that confirms a lot of what I had thought for many years. You see, I've kind of been a black sheep in a lot of the seed oil debates because I haven't really had a dog in the fight one way or the other. I'm not anti-seed oil. I think that consuming some seeds and getting the oils from those seeds is perfectly fine, but I also understand the argument. And I look at the literature and some of it is definitely debatable. Let's put it that way. And I do think that seed oils are something where it just seems like we do consume an unnatural amount of them. I try to look at food as a food matrix sort of thing. Like what is the amount that we would get in a normal life? And I try not to even look at it from an ancestral point of view because we're not living ancestrally. We're living in a different industrialized time. But I also try to be realistic. Like if I am consuming a food that has the amount of seed oil from five cups of pine nuts or sunflower seeds, they don't think that's exactly what our bodies cut out to consume. That being said, and I digress, this new study illuminates a lot about linoleic acid, okay, the particular oil that is in things like sunflower oil, safflower oil, cottonseed, grape seed, corn oil, even soybean oil, and it can give us a little bit of insight as to well, how we can mitigate the potential issues and what it does to our mitochondria, which is really alarming. And after today's video, I put a link down below for 25% off for Seeds Daily Symbiotic. This is a prebiotic and a probiotic combined. So when you're looking at metabolic health, one of the strongest bodies of research is in the world of microbiome diversity and just the microbiome in general short chain fatty acid production, yada, yada. I don't like probiotics because I think most of them are garbage and I'd rather eat fermented food. But Seed has been on this channel for years as probably the only probiotic I would ever recommend because they have legit science behind it and they have a unique technology with their capsule inside of a capsule. So I am a believer that, hey, this actually gets to where it's supposed to go because the multi-stage delivery so if you're making a change to your diet, you're really trying to improve your gut health, I highly, highly recommend it. And right now is a chance to get 25% off. So that link is down below in the top line of the description underneath this video, 25% off daily symbiotic. So this study was published in the journal Lipid Research and it does include rats, okay? It's hard to look at human model stuff with this kind of thing. It's gonna take time, okay? But we have to look at this stuff first. So in rats, they had them consume a low linoleic acid diet, a high linoleic acid diet, or a high oxidized linoleic acid diet. And they looked at mitochondrial damage, they looked at what this did to energy manufacturing, and a whole host of other things. What they found with this was that linoleic acid, seed oils, did not cause any kind of mitochondrial damage or dysfunction. It was actually surprising because based upon a lot of other literature, it would make sense that maybe this did happen. But what they found, believe it or not, was that oxidized linoleic acid definitely caused mitochondrial dysfunction. It decreased ATP production. It absolutely reduced the expression of like the complexes for the electron transport chain, which means that the mitochondria was less able to produce energy and it increased the NLRP3 inflammasome. It increased inflammation, which is exactly what people tend to say. Like, so when people look at the omega-6 argument, like seed oils versus fish oils, the old argument used to be omega-6s or seed oils are pro-inflammatory because of the E2 prostaglandins and whatnot, right? That eventually got debunked because we found that it all ends up down what is called the arachidonic acid chain. And what that means in layman's terms is that omega-6s or omega-3s, they're all going to be almost equally pro-inflammatory and equally anti-inflammatory. There's context and there's a give and take based upon the demand of what the body needs. So omega-6s are not directly pro-inflammatory unless you're having a ridiculous amount. So the seed oil inflammation argument became a little bit more of a moot point. But what we see here now is that it's the oxidized oils, the oxidized linoleic acid, that at least in rodents is a very clear problem. They also found that there was an increase in what is called mitochondrial apoptosis signal reducing kinase. Mouthful. What that is, is a signal that activates inside the mitochondria to basically 
have it go through apoptosis, basically self-destruct. So oxidized seed oils wreck our metabolism. They wreck us metabolically. They wreck mitochondria. At least they do in rats. Okay, I have to be real here. Now, what's interesting is if you look at a study that was published in Diabetology, it found that type 2 diabetes and mitochondrial dysfunction were pretty much bidirectional. And what that means is that it's a bidirectional relationship between mitochondrial dysfunction can cause type 2 diabetes, but also insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes can cause mitochondrial dysfunction. And they both can work both ways and start each other off. So could you make the argument that oxidized seed oils could cause metabolic issues, potentially even insulin resistance? In rodents, I think you could make that claim. I don't know if it's transferable to humans yet, but based upon the surmounting like, evidence that we're seeing, it seems like the oxidized oils are a problem, but that's no real surprise. And that's what frustrates me when we talk about seed oils is like, how can we don't address this major elephant in the room? I don't think it's a problem to have sunflower seeds. I don't think it's a problem to have these seed oils occasionally. But when you have oxidized rancid oils, which unfortunately is most of how we're consuming them, I think we're just turning a blind eye to the fact that that really is a problem. Okay, when on earth does it make sense to consume a half a cup of oil that came from three cups of seeds that's been sitting out for months? That just doesn't make any sense. Like make that make sense to me in any way, shape or form, how that would be good for our body. Then by the way, let's heat it to 400 degrees plus and a couple times up and down and, and you know, and then assume it's still gonna be fine and not be denatured when it's a very fragile oil that gets denatured as soon as it's heated. Oh, never mind the fact that there's a bunch of solvents and other chemicals. We can't really talk about those because we don't have a whole lot of proof and because they're generally recognized as safe when they're going through the manufacturing process, so we're not allowed to say that they're bad because there's not enough evidence to say they're truly bad, but come on, okay? So you may think Thomas is just getting on the seed oil like hating train, but I'm not, I'm not one of those guys. I'm not the anti-seed oil guy. I just think the evidence is there against oxidized seed oils. Now, when you look at linoleic acid, not all seed oils have a lot of linoleic acid, but the ones that have the most, we have safflower oil, we have sunflower oil. Okay, these are like the two highest, like 78 and 73%. Grape seed oil is really high. Then you have corn oil, then you get down to soybean oil. Soybean oil is like 51%. So that's what's kind of funny is that I don't think soybean oil is the best thing ever, for sure. Okay, especially when you come down to like how many chemicals are probably in it and solvents. But a lot of companies moved over to sunflower oil because people liked seeing sunflower oil more than they liked seeing soybean oil. But when you get down to linoleic acid, sunflower oil might be more problematic than corn oil, right? But corn oil has more chemicals and solvents. So choose your battle, like which one is more important to you? For me, the oxidized linoleic acid has some of the strongest evidence against it. So I am probably more inclined to like stay away from those kinds of oils. Not that I'm gonna go for a soybean oil. What can you take away from this video? Well, for one, you have some fodder to talk to your friends about and you can actually have a, a dog in the fight when it comes down to the seed oils by saying, hey, it's the oxidized part that's the problem. Maybe not just the inherent nature of a seed oil, but it also allows you to navigate a bit better. Cook in tallow, cook in ghee, cook in avocado oil. It's even better to cook in olive oil, which we used to say don't cook in high heat with olive oil. I would much rather you do that than sunflower oil. At this point in time, these products are getting cheaper and they're more affordable. So there's no reason to opt for a sunflower oil or a corn oil. Skimp somewhere else. Invest in something that you know is going to be safer for you long term. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.